your voices today over the background noise. You want some sound? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, all good. Mark Fern, Minister for Agricultural Industry Development and Fisheries and Minister for Rural Communities. Can I say what a pleasure it is to be here at the ECA after three long years and two missing out uh, on those shows. We're back, bigger, brighter and better. So I want to encourage everyone to come out to ECA today on this Sunday. Finishes next Saturday, so make sure you come along. But when you're here, have a look at the animals, talk to the farmers, talk, catch up with them, see what, why we're known all around the world as providers of the best fresh green produce nationally and internationally. We've got plenty on, on offer here, so turn up, have a good time, bring the family, bring the children and have a great day. I'll hand over to Murray. All good. Uh, well, thanks very much, Mark. It's terrific to be with Mark Vernon, my great mate, the Queensland Agriculture Minister, as the new Federal Agriculture Minister for Australia. Uh, the ECA is an institution, as all of you know. I've been coming here since I was a kid, bringing my kids here as well, and it's such an important opportunity uh, for the city to meet the country and the country to meet the city. Uh, it's a really important occasion uh, for us to bring all Queenslanders together, whether they live in inner city Brisbane or out west or up north, uh, it's the chance for everyone to understand where each other comes from, what we all do and the importance of our agriculture industry right here in Queensland. It's obviously a particularly significant ECA at the moment because it's been more than a thousand days since we've all been able to celebrate this. Uh, I know I'm looking forward to bringing back my daughter on People's Day on Wednesday and she's already been looking at what show bag she's going to be making me buy for her while making sure that we drop by and see a few of the animals as well. Uh, I think this, this ECA is particularly significant, obviously for the fact that it's the first one in a while, but it's also happening at a time when there is a lot of uncertainty around about uh, agriculture, world prices, energy crisis, the impact on agriculture and of course biosecurity. And you will have seen in recent days and recent weeks the Albanese government has been making a range of more measures to make sure that we stay foot and mouth disease free. It's really important to remember that for all of the talk about this uh, and all of the concern, a lot of which is understandable, Australia does remain foot and mouth disease free uh, and we have every intention of keeping it that way. Uh, that's why the government has put in a three-pronged response with tough new measures at home, support abroad, particularly for Indonesia, and just this week announcing the third prong to our approach, which is about putting in place a preparedness task force to bring together all the arms of federal government in biosecurity, in crisis management, in emergency management, the army, border force, to make sure that if the worst were to happen and we had an outbreak here in Australia, that we would be thoroughly prepared. Uh, people can have confidence uh, that between the federal government, the states and territories, we have very well developed plans uh, to deal with any biosecurity outbreak, whether it be foot and mouth disease or anything else. Uh, but it's always best to have prevention is better than cure, and that's why we've made sure that we've established this task force uh, to run the ruler over all of our plans, make sure that we are thoroughly prepared as a country uh, if we were to see an outbreak happen here. But really, today is more about just having fun. It is so terrific uh, for everyone to be able to come back to the ECA, as I say, whether they be from the bush or from Brisbane. It's a really important meeting place. It's a really important place for us to showcase our incredible quality uh, agricultural products, whether they be animals, plants or made products like jams and scones and things like that. It's a great celebration and it's really good that we can all back, get back together again and celebrate. Happy to take any questions and I'm sure Mark is too. Minister, you said uh, worst of the worst if um, foot and mouth were to outbreak. What, what would that look like? Yeah, well, it's important to remember that while we do have a risk of having a foot and mouth disease outbreak in Australia, as we do with lumpy skin and other diseases as well, the risk is still quite low. Uh, so our experts have assessed the risk of Australia having a foot and mouth disease outbreak at about 11.6% over the next five years. Lumpy skin is a higher risk, being 28%. Uh, and that's why it is important that we be prepared now 
now uh, to make sure that if the worst does happen, we are thoroughly prepared. Um, basically, if we were to have an outbreak, uh, the first step would be to declare a national livestock standstill for 72 hours uh, to make sure that any infected livestock were not able to travel to other parts of the country uh, to try to contain that virus. And then there would be urgent discussions about what more we should do next. That might in include longer term movement controls, it might include vaccination programs, it might include culling. Uh, so those plans have been very well thought through, very well developed over recent years uh, by some of the leading biosecurity experts in the country. But the point of this preparedness task force is to, as I say, bring together the different arms of federal government to make sure that everyone is working together, to make sure that everyone understands their roles and responsibilities uh, to, to contain any outbreak should it occur. Yeah, well, again, that, that is another matter which is going to be looked at in, by our preparedness task force because, as I say, while there's been a lot of publicity about foot and mouth disease, and understandably because it would be devastating if it got in here, lumpy skin disease is also a very serious disease which would particularly affect our cattle industry. Uh, so the preparedness task force that we've got in place will be examining our re response plans should an outbreak of that occur. Uh, we are already are providing vaccines to Indonesia and we will be continuing to do that soon for Timor Leste and Papua New Guinea uh, because the risk of lumpy skin is that it would be potentially brought here by the wind. It's a mosquito-borne virus uh, and what would happen is that if uh, we've already seen that outbreak start in Indonesia and if the winds were to blow mosquitoes from Indonesia to Timor-Leste to Papua New Guinea and then potentially into northern Australia, uh, that would be a serious risk for our cattle industry. So providing those vaccines and other technical support to other countries is actually in our national interest, just as it's in the interest of those countries to help them get it under control. Yeah, look, I, I, th I support any measure that can be put in place to both reduce the risk of foot and mouth disease spreading, but also to inform the public about what they can do uh, to help us keep this outbreak away and if it were to get here, keep it under control. Biosecurity is a shared responsibility. I've absolutely got obligations as the Federal Minister and that's why we've been ramping up our measures at the borders, including foot mats at airports, more biosecurity officers. We're now screening every single mail package that comes in from Indonesia to check for meat products that might be coming in that might contain viral fragments. Uh, but it's very important as well that the states and territories do their bit, and I know Mark and his colleagues are, uh, and also it's really important that the public do their bit. That's why we've been asking people when they're coming back from Bali, thoroughly clean your shoes or preferably leave them behind uh, and also understand the warning signs where we're getting information out to farmers uh, so that they know what to look out for, particularly blistering uh, of animals is a, is a ready sign. Uh, but things like foot mats here at the Eka, they will make a difference but importantly they, they really educate people about what we can all do to keep ourselves disease free. Uh, well, if there were to be an outbreak of foot and mouth disease in Australia, that would be devastating to our livestock industry. Uh, the cost of that has been estimated at $80 billion over a decade. Uh, and while lumpy skin disease isn't quite of the same magnitude, you're still looking at several billions of dollars of impact. Uh, and that's because if foot and mouth disease were to enter Australia or lumpy skin disease, our exports of those products would shut down overnight and it would take some time to come under control. So again, that's why it's in all of our interests to do what needs to be done, uh, to take this seriously, to act calmly uh, and in, in a considered fashion based on biosecurity advice, to put measures in at the borders, to screen male products, but also as members of the public to do the right thing. One of the main reasons why we won the uh, Olympic and the Paralympic Games for 2032 was because we worked together with all levels of government. That continues. In fact, with the new election of a federal government and, and Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, we are a better place to move forward in terms of making sure this is the best and brightest games we'll ever see. Recently, we announced $100 million in terms of 
developing and, and increasing our sport engagement in several schools right throughout the state. So that's the next generation of, of sporting students coming through for those games. So I'm not going to uh, take much notice of what uh, a disgruntled senator uh, is saying about uh, one of the most spectacular games we'll see in the next uh, decade. Sorry, I can't, can't hear That sort of incident, that criminal incident, is very rare on uh, farming properties. I've, I've uh, never heard that, uh, certainly in my period as, as the Minister for Agriculture. Uh, our hearts go out to those families that have been impacted by that uh, result, no doubt. Uh, but once again, that, that's a criminal investigation the police will be dealing with. I'd certainly be interested in the final outcome. Uh, but once again, our hearts do go out to, to the families of those that have been affected by that incident. Look, look, absolutely. We're, we're completely focused on these these uh, games. Uh, that's why we're working both in all levels of, of those that are on the committees, those that are engaged in it. There's a whole escalation of, of looking at Queensland produce through through uh, the purchase of, of you know, matters that will assist in terms of making sure these games are the best uh, we're ever seeing. One, one thing we encourage people when they come to the ECA, bring a mask with them or get them on entry because we do encourage people to wear them indoors or in areas where they can't social distance. I've been indoors wearing my mask today and I'm pretty impressed with the number of people that are also wearing them. So you'll see even around the crowd here people with them drooped underneath their ch uh, chins. So once again, bring your mask along, make sure you're protected uh, and you'll, you'll have no issues. Oh, look, it'd be a rough figure, but uh, what I've seen, there's a reasonable amount of people that are wearing masks here at the Echo. Are there Well, certainly, if you're not feeling well, the, the best thing to do is stay away from the Echo. We don't want people coming here spreading, whether it be the flu or COVID. Uh, make sure you get uh, tested if you're not feeling unwell, um, and make, make sure you look after you. Your, your, your friends, that, that's the important outcome to, to keep away from the echo if you're feeling unwell. And in terms of numbers, the more or less In terms of the echo numbers, um, it's relatively streaming through on a, on a reasonable base and no doubt with the pre-ticket sales, that was the nature of protecting people that come to the, the echo, but also making sure there's no super spread as a result of the numbers that they're, they're prepared. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Just going to get some overlay, yeah, I think. Sure. We'll do some overlay walk, walking through the cattle, if you like.